Let's spend a minute talking about writing cases. Many of you in the academic world uh, may not be rewarded in any way for writing cases, and therefore it's not on your agenda. Some of you may have uh, case writers that you can employ. Uh, some of you are simply going to be hiring or buying other people's cases uh, that they've written in other settings. Uh, but let's just spend a minute uh, on case writing. It is, I think, a specialized skill. Uh, it's the opposite from most of business journalism where in an article in, say, Fortune or Business Week or you pick your favorite uh, magazine, uh, the artist, the author wants to bring you to a particular uh, closing. They want to lead you to a provocative thought and uh, almost like a symphony leave you with this kind of emotional component. <coughs> but a good case, uh, like an academic journal article, has uh, a set of uh, components, a uh, certain structure that has proven to be very effective over time. And that structure typically includes a half a page or so of an opening statement, some background on the company or the individual or both, uh, some history, some quotes from real life people who've been involved in the situation that shows the div di divergence of perspective, real data, even if it's disguised, if the ratios are accurate, it's real. And it includes people. It's not just an analytic or a blown up problem set, but it includes people who are wrestling with a set of issues. And finally, it will come back to the opening statement, again, almost like a symphony, where there's an overture and a reprise, so that you get this uh, coming around a full circle. Start with an issue, maybe from a particular person's point of view or a group of people's point of view. Then you give some background, some additional data, commentary, some quotes to bring the thing alive, additional data, and then you come right back to the same situation uh, and now, with this additional data, what are you going to do? Uh, the ability to do that without uh, appearing hokey, without, you know, President Jones stared silently out the window as the snow fell on the lawn, trying to imagine what he should do with his company. If you have that kind of an opening sentence, people are going to go, ah. You know, it's just, it'd be, it feels like fiction. So, writing a case that has, at the one, on the one hand, serious data, accurate data, real data, that has a logical story that is in part sifted from history, but in part includes data that's relevant but maybe not significant that brings real people into the situation so it's not just a problem set with a few little embellishments and then brings you back around to what are you going to do now uh, there's a real skill to that and in my experience every time I wrote a case and I've written 300 of them I never quite knew if it was going to work in the classroom until I tried it now over the years I think I got better and better at what does one look like and how do you make sure you've got the right data? Is there anything missing? Is it even possible to get that data? There are a lot of challenges with writing a good case and frequently it takes chronological front to back. It might take one to four months, maybe six months, depending on how many interviews you're doing and transcriptions and consolidating and putting all of that together. It can be a very arduous process. So if your organization doesn't reward case writing, obviously you're probably not going to do very much of it. But I've met with some institutions where they had a specialized kind of expertise and they began gradually writing short one, two, three, four, five page cases and now over the last 20 years have developed a repertoire, a library if you will, of cases and caselets that they can use 
to uh, educate their own people in the specific kinds of situations, real problems that their uh, organizational members will uh, confront. I think it's important also to think about length. Uh, cases have over the years gotten longer and longer, some of them up to 65 or 70 pages. If you're teaching a 90-minute class, that's an awful lot to ask somebody to read and prepare and analyze for a 90-minute class. We try to keep ours at 15 or less, single-spaced, maybe uh, several pages of additional exhibits, whether it's income statements, balance sheets, or advertising uh, examples or other supplemental uh, evidence. Uh, but I've known some cases that were a page and a half, two, three, four pages that were absolute classics and have lasted for more than a decade in their relevance and uh, power to provoke a discussion. So the length of a case is no guarantee of its excellence. Some cases by their nature require more data and uh, the sifting through that. Now, some people criticize cases because it's a sanitized view of the world. Somebody has gone out and gathered data and sanitized it. Partially, yes, but if you were in a company and interviewing a few people to figure out what was going on and you were a consultant, when do you stop interviewing? My answer is when about three or four times in a row I've heard the same set of issues over and over and over again, I'm going like, I may have to go way out on the tails in this organization before I'm going to find anything different. So uh, cases, yes, they sift, they screen out at a certain level. If they screen too much, I would say it's a poorly written case. So this criticism of cases as an overly sanitized way of looking at the world, I disagree with that. If you take a, a patient in a hospital in the ER and they've got interns and residents we're trying to train and you list a set of uh, symptoms and you ask what does this patient have, that might be a one-page case. And the students may or may not be able to say, wait a minute, how did you get that data? Where did it come from? Oh, and by the way, there's some data missing here. We need to go get some additional data. So in my mind, that's all fair game for a case discussion and a good case uh, will have a little bit of extraneous data in it, but not 30, 40 pages. So 15 pages or less, maybe targeting seven, eight, or nine, and making it in a way that there are multiple opportunities for discussion and uh, action planning at the end. I love writing cases. I think it's a, a wonderful exercise. It puts me in the field, in the midst of practicing managers, as opposed to dealing with databases and computers, not uh, denigrating the value of those, only saying that I learn a lot by being on site, in the room, with the people that I'm writing about and trying to teach my students to become like. So uh, the issue then is, uh, if you put all this effort into it, can you predict the success rate? In my experience, that's very difficult. Uh, you, I have a, you know, it's better than 50-50, but it's not 100%. So you write a new case and you think it's going to work in the classroom and sometimes for whatever reason it doesn't. And I've got some of those. Most of them I think uh, when we take them in, you can find a way to make it sing. You might have to think about it in a different way, take a different perspective. But typically, if you work at it long enough and hard enough, you can make almost any case sing. But it means you may have to get outside of the uh, nine dot square and be a little creative about it. Case writing is a wonderfully rewarding uh, bonding experience with the practicing manager on the ground, and I highly recommend it, although I realize that in many institutions it is not rewarded in any way, shape, or fashion.